Hi, I'm Dr. Don, and in this session we're going to be talking about the basic rules of relationships. You know, when I was growing up, we had board games at our house, and one of our favorites was Monopoly. And if you had Milton Bradley games, you could always pop the top off of, you know, the Milton Bradley game, and the rules were written on the back there of the top cover that you'd read before you'd start into doing one of those games. Well, when people get into a relationship, they wonder, what are some of the basic rules that we need to operate by to make this relationship work? And I'm going to recommend to you about six rules that I think if people would own and operate from in their relationships with one another, things would go a lot better. So you're in a couple's relationship, especially these are very, very powerful for you. The first rule we're going to look at is the one that I call Personal responsibility. The rule of personal responsibility. And it seems like a funny place to start when we're talking about a couple relationship, but a good relationship is built on me taking responsibility for the stuff that I need to take responsibility for. I'm responsible for those attitudes and actions that lead to my own personal fulfillment. A lot of times when people come in to me as a marriage and family therapist and they sit down and they're talking, they're talking and blaming everyone and everything in their life for what's gone wrong. And eventually I have to ask them a question. And that question is, what have you been doing that contributes to where you are in your life? And sometimes the answer to that is nothing more than, well, I just didn't see it. But people that are successful in relationships are able to look at what they're doing and what they're doing to contribute to the problem as well as what they need to do to contribute to the solution. So the first rule of successful relationships is the rule of personal responsibility. The second rule is a rule that I call, I'll change first. The I'll change first rule. When people are having difficulties with one another, when they get crossways and get into arguments, they generally back off. And they hole up in their walled castles of emotional hurt and pain, and they protect themselves. Well, it's hard to be close to somebody else if I'm behind a walled castle and what I tend to do is I tend to wait for the other person to come out first and be vulnerable. And then they in turn are waiting for me to come out first and be vulnerable. And we're both waiting on each other to make the first move. What we recommend couples do is that they embrace this I'll change first rule. What that says is I will do those things that are necessary for the good of our relationship. And here's the key word regardless of what the other person is doing. I will make those changes, I will have those attitudes that I need to take regardless of what this other person is doing. And what that does is that puts the responsibility of me to do those things I need to be doing and then oftentimes when the other person sees what I'm doing they'll reciprocate more quickly and easily. The third rule we recommend is the baby steps rule. The baby steps rule. When I talk to folks in counseling, one of the things I do is I don't recommend big, huge changes. People come in and they'll say, what can we do to make things a little bit better? And what I recommend is I'll recommend small changes done consistently over time that will lead us to larger changes in a month, in six months, down the road in a year. Because you know what, I've discovered most of us, myself included, can make a small shift. In other words, it might be something, nothing more than me deciding, instead of interrupting her, I'm going to let her finish her thought, and I'm going to think about what she said before I jump in and make my little lecture. My father-in-law was a navigator on B-52s, and he did those nuclear runs up toward the Soviet Union during the Cold War. 
And he told me one time that as they would take off from the heartland and fly over the polar cap to hit Russian airspace, he would say they would radio up the coordinates of where they were going to do their bombing run into the Soviet Union. And he had a slide rule and a pencil and he'd figure it out. They didn't have computers in those days and he'd figure it out on his map. And he said, you know what the hardest thing about that was? He said the hardest thing about that was if you're off one degree flying over Montana, that turns into 600 miles when you get into the Soviet Union. A small step here can make a huge difference in your destination on down the road. So one of the things we recommend to couples is, if you're looking for some major changes, start today with some small steps that can produce some huge results. The fourth rule is the fear of change. The fear of change rule. The fear of change rule basically says people keep doing what they're doing because they're afraid of doing something else. I'm not big on reading quotes, but I want to read you something that's written by Thomas Jefferson in your Declaration of Independence. Jefferson wrote this. Prudence dictates that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. Basically he's saying we don't dump our government every day just because we're unhappy with it. Experience has shown mankind are more disposed to suffer than to right themselves by abolishing the forms they are accustomed to. Basically what Jefferson was saying to us was people would much rather complain and put up with what they've got than to step out and make the changes that they really in their heart know that they need to make. So one of the things we recommend to people in relationships, one of the basic rules is face the fear that you have of change and make some of those steps that you know you need to make. Take personal responsibility and do that. Number five is the present rule. Couples that do well live by the present rule. By that we mean normally, especially when we're having arguments, when we're having disagreements, when we're solving problems, it works real well to stay in the present moment. Doobie Brothers had a song called Long Train Running and that's what a lot of couples do with their arguments. They begin with one topic and then they go to last week and last month and last year and before we know it we're back at Christmas in 1995 and nobody remembers that very, very well. All of my family, all of my mother's family grew up over in East Texas and I remember as a little boy traveling to my uncle's house because the big news was they got indoor plumbing. And so we all had to go out there because they weren't using the outhouse anymore. And I can remember that my aunt and uncle announced we have the new bathroom, we have the new toilet, and we're only going to flush the commode in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. We only flush it three times a day because we don't want to wear out our toilet, you understand. Well, that was pretty disgusting when you got to about 11.30 in the morning, about 5 in the afternoon, about 10 o'clock at night because you really need to flush the toilet a lot more than that. And that's a terrible illustration, but a lot of people live their lives that way. They don't flush the past as much as they need to do that. So one of the things we recommend is, in relationships, if you need to go back into the past, if things are happening in the present moment that are continuing from the past, that's understandable. But if I'm going back into the past, scorekeeping and beating my partner up with that stuff, I probably need to look at the present rule. The final rule that I want to recommend to you is the rule of recall. Really good relationships are able to remember and recall the powerful and positive memories that have occurred between the two of those people and replay those once again in their mind. Let me borrow something from attribution theory for just a minute. Most of you remember in your math class you learned the bell-shaped curve. So there's our bell-shaped curve. Everything that happens in a couple's relationship is going to fit under one of these three different quadrants. 
there's going to be stuff that happens in a relationship that is absolutely positive. We get worried that we just got back an IRS chest of $5,000 that we didn't expect. Absolutely positive. There's stuff that happens in a relationship that is, by definition, negative. We just get news that someone came down with cancer or I lost my job. There's stuff that happens that's absolutely negative. But the vast majority of stuff that happens in a relationship is in the middle. It is neutral. It just, it, it just is. It's neither positive or negative. Now, if I'm using the rule of recall, which is to take in good relationships, we take all that neutral stuff and we assign it toward the positive. So my partner is noticing it's 6.15, I'm normally home 20 minutes ago and I'm not there yet. They take that neutral event, I'm not there, and they assign it toward the positive. He must have hit traffic, he's running late, he had to work overtime. Now here's the interesting side note. Couples that are distressed and having difficulties take this bulk of neutral stuff and guess what direction they assign it? They assign it toward the negative. So I'm running late, it's been 30 minutes, and my partner's at home going, well, he's stopped by, he's gotten drunk, or he's picked up a girlfriend, he's done something there that I'm not going to like. So the rule of recall takes the neutral stuff that occurs in a relationship and it assigns it toward the positive, which produces some really, really powerful results. So as you think about your relationships as they get started, we recommend you use some very basic rules to make your relationships really run well.